and welcome everybody. Uh, it's a ple pleasure and a privilege to be able to present to you on this webinar. Um, I've got a few questions to ask you as we go through, but I really want to use this webinar just to go through and show you the new features in the geotechnical module. So before we start, we're going to talk a little bit about kinetics, literally only a minute or so. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, familiar with the geotechnical module, I'll do a quick five-minute overview of all the functionality in it. And then the main bulk of this uh, webinar will be really going through the nitty-gritty of the new features that have been added to 2018. And uh, I think this is probably one of the biggest releases uh, so far uh, that we've released uh, with new functionality. Now, I think the geotechnical module is fantastic. We would do because we're the developers of it, but I think there are still got limitations. So we'll look towards the end of the presentation of what happens if you need to go beyond the, the geotechnical module. And then we'll finish up with answering any uh, questions and answers, as Ken said. But also, by all means, make sure you use that uh, question box. If there's relevant questions that Ken uh, or Amy can ask me during the presentation, I'm more than happy to try to answer them as I go through. Uh, we've got quite a lot to pack in, though, uh, but please make sure you ask any questions, uh, anything I say. Uh, if you don't understand, you want more clarity, please just type away in that question box, and we'll do our best to answer that for you. So first of all, who are we? Why Kinetics are doing this? There's my cursor gone. There it is. So Kinetics, we're a UK uh, software house, and we just specialize on developing geotechnical, geo-environmental software, uh, data management, BIM software. We have been doing it, uh, we had a different name before, but we've been doing it for over 25 years. Originally very much specific to the UK, but in the last five years or so, we have really done a concerted effort in working with Autodesk uh, bringing our solutions out to the US. Uh, uh, I mentioned it a moment ago, but we are actually the developers of the geotechnical module. Uh, we develop it and, or, and we license it to Autodesk, so the product geotechnical module is available through the Autodesk subscription program. Uh, we are also basically Autodesk's go-to people for anything to do with geotechnics. They come and talk to us and ask us, and we help them on various projects. And finally, but by no means least, uh, the reason why I'm here, I'm working with Applied, is I'm, I'm very pleased and proud to be have Applied as our partners in the US in uh, bringing this technology through to you and training you up. So that's a little bit about Kinetics. Uh, moving on now, I just want to have a flavor of the people we're, we're talking to here. So we've got a couple of uh, poll questions to quickly ask, uh, which are really to find out the type of roles that you guys are doing. So uh, we've just got that poll open. I'll just give you a little bit to answer that. So are there any geotechnical professionals on here at all? CAD technicians, CAD managers? BIM managers, if you type something other, if you can put it into the uh, question box and just type in there uh, what the other is, it would be much appreciated. So we'll just give a, a moment or two longer just to, um, just to get up there. We're up to 80% now of those voted. So if you haven't voted yet, just give you a quick moment to vote. Okay, we've just closed it. It's okay. That's fine, so let's close it there. So to give you a quick breakdown, uh, roughly speaking, 27% of people are geotechnical professionals, 27% are 20, uh, CAD technicians, 9% uh, CAD managers, 18% uh, BIM managers, and 18% other. So for those others, if you could just quickly type in either in the chat box or in the uh, question box, please. Uh, what your other roles are, it'll be much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, let's go on to the uh, next poll question, which is, uh, for those of you who obviously draw geotechnical drawings, so uh, Amy, if we can just move on to the second poll question, thank you. Uh, really, this is, you can tick as many boxes as you like here, 
So I'm, we're trying to get a, a flavour of the type of drawings you produce. So please tick away as many times as you like in all the different chat boxes. So you don't do, please tick if you do no geotechnical drawings at all. You primarily, you do boring site plans or borehole site plans. Do you do cross sections? Do you try to create 3D geology models? And please also let us know whether you are already using the geotechnical module. So remember, you don't have to do one tick box here. You can tick as many items as you can. OK, so 79% of you have uh, voted. But what I'm really interested in is that no one is using the geotechnical module. OK, that is a bit of a surprise on that one. So, uh, so about 25% don't do geotechnical drawings, fair enough. 45% uh, of you produce site plans, 27% of you generate uh, cross sections. Uh, no one uh, uses uh, the geotechnical module. Well, hopefully for those of you who do site plans and cross sections, you'll learn a lot of the capability of the geotechnical module from this particular webinar. So let me move on now. And I think this is, looks like it's appropriate for everybody on the call. Uh, what is the geotechnical module all about? Well, as I mentioned before, it's available through the AutoCAD Civil 3D subscription program. Uh, and uh, if you're there, you'll better see it and download it. Uh, it's there for 16 and 17. We're still waiting for the 18 version to be made available. It should be any day now. Uh, and it really contains a set of tools to allow you to create and visualize the geotechnical subsurface. So the different geology materials and layers, and the various tools in there for you to create that and view that information. So it primarily uh, covers four main areas of functionality. It has a means for you to create a local project and import data. So it's a little bit like creating AutoCAD Civil 3D surfaces, uh, you create a surface placeholder and then you bring data into that surface. So a similar concept here. We have what we call the Location and Strata Manager, which uh, controls what 3D boreholes and what geology stratas are displayed. We have tools for creating uh, geotechnical profiles, uh, which basically are profile views that have log strips on it and management tools for both styles and hatching. So let's have a quick look at this. I say this is a pretty fast, rapid five minute demo of the functionality. So first thing we're going to do is go to the geotechnical module ribbon and click to the geotechnical module database. So this is a local database installed on your local machine and in it is listed all of the current projects that you have on the go. Now if I want to, I could just come in here now and create a new project. So let's create one here. Let's call it uh, Charlotte Hills. Some of the fields are mandatory. So for instance, I need to give it a category. I need to give it a site, but that's really it. And now we can go in here and you can see we open up this project. Now it's a blank project. There's nothing in there. So it's not particularly entertaining at the moment. So first thing we have to do is go and load in data. Now, in this case, we're going to bring in CS3 data. I'm not going into detail in this webinar on the contents. We've done that in previous webinars. There's tutorials. But if you need to know more information about this, just let Ken or me know, and we can give you a lot more information on the formats and how to get data into, into the geotechnical module. But here, it's gone through. It's validated the actual data, checked which boreholes are bringing in. You can choose them. And once you complete it, you can see your 3D boreholes being shown on screen. Now this is the location manager. That really allows you to control what elements are shown and how they are shown. So for instance, I could change the vertical exaggeration. So here we're working with five times vertical exaggeration. We can change the material the boreholes display. So uh, you may have soil classifications, rock classifications, and we can change the way we, we want those boreholes to be displayed re representing that information. 
whether we want to show 3D models, strips, a whole host of different things here. So if I go back onto our plan mode here now, I can select a few boreholes and tell them to display the log strips for these. So you can see now beside each borehole, it clearly shows us what geology has been found down that borehole. I'm just going over here and we're going to set a different type of uh, log strip to be the current log strip. So now these ones are showing the soil classifications, the unified soil classification hatch patterns. You can see all set up, ready to go out of the box with the system. Where a lot of users want to use this for is actually to start modeling and looking at the actual 3D geology surfaces. So here, as I click, it's actually creating pairs of AutoCAD civil uh, surfaces for each geology material we have. It's as quick as that. This is a sort of a, a, it's a recording, but it's a true speed. This is the work you need to do. Now, this is quite clean data. I've got some nice uh, layers showing there. Not always that clean. You sometimes have to model the data a little bit and do some work using civil break lines and boundaries. But once you've got the data there, you can then start using the create profile view command. So here I'm just selecting a uh, profile view to use. I'm going to, in this case, draw a new alignment through the site, so, or I could pick an existing one. This is now telling me uh, what type of borehole log strips I want to show. Do I want to select uh, what boreholes I want to show? And it's basically looked 20 feet either side of my alignment and projected those boreholes onto my profile view. If I move my alignment to a new location, because we use an AutoCAD Civil, can you see the profile views all updated, the log strips are all updated and shown on it? It's an incredibly rapid way of getting these cross sections drawn. You know, if you were drawing these manually, it will probably take you an hour or two a piece to draw them. Here we draw them in literally in seconds. And it actually changes the way you go about working. This becomes a thinking tool because you can draw cross sections so quickly or profile views so quickly. You use it as a tool to look at and investigate and try to understand what is really going on subground using it. So that's from the five minute overview of the geotechnical module. I'm now going to concentrate a little bit more now on the new features in there. Just before we do that, we're just going to have a quick look at the next poll question, which is uh, how do you receive, for those of you who do geotechnics, how do you receive the data? So PDF files, Excel, GINT, you don't receive any or other. Now, my colleague, he's not actually on this presentation today, but uh, he will be horrified to see that we're 65% of you receive PDF files. The reason he'll be horrified at that, it's going down now, 58%, is we, we in Kinetics, and my colleague Roger came up with these two rules, two rules for data entry. Only enter data once and get someone else to do it. The problem is, you see, if you get in PDF files, someone's already entered that data to create the PDF file, and now you're having to enter that data again for you to type that data in to see it inside AutoCAD. Ideally, you don't want to do any extra typing. You just want to use the, the raw data coming through. So we've uh, closed that poll. So to finish it off now then, so just to quickly recap there, roughly 60% are using PDFs. That means you're having to type it all back in. 17% are getting data from Excel, 8% get it from uh, GINT, and 17% don't get any data. So that's a really uh, eye-opening and uh, something we could perhaps we'll come back to briefly at the end of the presentation. So thank you very much for that. So let's now move on with the main part of the presentation, which is what's new in 2018. So we're going to go through this now in a little bit more detail, covering the various new features. Uh, I think I'll just move straight on to the first major feature, which is uh, enhanced layer management. So basically, in the previous versions of the geotechnical module, to be fair, 
you didn't have much control over what layers geotechnical information appeared on. Uh, the geotechnical module had a mind of its own and just put data wherever it thought it ought to go. We have really tightened it up and gave you a lot more control in this later version. So if we were just to see this now, so we have this simple layer command. And basically what the layer command is there to do is to define the actual definition of the layer names to be used for the geotechnical module. So you basically can generate a prefix. So in this case, we'll say, let's put all the geotechnical layers on some instance with G underscore. And then we can pick different types of subgrouping. In this case, we're going to say none. So all it means we're going to do is any geotechnical data we create will all go on to a layer given by that prefix, G underscore. So not really a layering convention, but at least we are pushing all our layers, all of our data onto one particular layer. So you can see there, G underscore. So just to go back into this and give it a little bit more detail, uh, let's just change the prefix to GE. And perhaps this time we want to subgroup them based on the stratum. You know, what type of geology was it related to? So if it's surfaces or log strips, what part, what layer should we put individual geologies on? So we'll just re-update the data again. And now you can see we have these different layers being created based on geology type. Okay. So you can see the makeup how this works so we go back into the layer command again perhaps this time we want to say let's start off with the main object type is it a 3d surface is it a fence diagram is it a log strip we can then perhaps do a subdivision of layers based on in this case let's go for stratum again and you can see underneath it, as you do that it gives you an example so here we're also going to give it a prefix so we've got all different examples at the bottom so now if we go through that same little uh, routine again, we'll just quickly update the data, bring it back in again. Let's just create some uh, civil 3D surfaces. So now you can see how we got this sort of detailed layer definition being built up. So really what this tool is all about is allowing you to define the actual layer names or the, the way the layer names are built up that the geotechnical module controls. So here we've just gone to the default method. Now we also divide it and whether it's text or hatch. And we've also turned on this idea of splitting. So in the geotechnical module, you can have complex hatch styles that are on uh, multiple colors, multiple patterns to build up a single hatch. So we can put those onto different layers as well. And the reason for doing that, it then gives us full control using the normal layer map manager of how what colors we want them to be we can override all the default uh, save configurations by just literally coming to the layer manager as we are here now and changing an individual color or whatever in there so you can see using this functionality we've got complete control now if you don't like the terms we're using in our layers you don't want to call your 3d wells 3d wells you want to call them uh, boreholes you can use the terminology editor here to actually change those terms to whatever you want them to be. So really now you can see you've got complete control over the layering structure that you use, which should allow you to work with any layering specification your company may be adopting or using in a particular project. We've also made changes in this release to the Create Geotechnical Profile view. Uh, basically, uh, we give you more control now over what bands are being used. We also allow you to use non-geotechnical surfaces in your profile view, and we have better control uh, for the boreholes you select. So again, I think what we'll do is just quickly nip in here and have a look at this working. So you can see here, I actually have, this is the profile view command, so I'm telling it to which profile style to use, which bands to put onto the drawing. We can also come down here now and tell it to, uh, in this case, I'm just going to create a new alignment for it to use. And we can see down here, it's now listing to us our surface, our existing surface in here. So I'm just going to our existing surface so we have this really simple to use interface 
we go through here now and we can now specify what type of log strip styles we want to use. And we have this by buffer, so it means it's looking 20 feet either side of my alignment to look for any boreholes. If I flip it into manual mode, you can see it's a subtle difference from the old version. But we now have all those existing boreholes already there. I can now go in and select additional boreholes to be projected onto my cross-section, my profile view. I can also come in and actually turn some of the boreholes off and say, no, actually, I don't want that one to be shown. So we go through this wizard, hit finish, place it where we want it to be seen, and now we have the corresponding profile view, view being created. And in there, you can just see the red line, which is the existing ground surface, just superimposed over the top of it. Now, one of the biggest wishes we had from the re previous geotechnical module was the ability to edit those geotechnical profile views, i.e., oh, I used the wrong log strip style, I want to use a different style, or I want to add new boreholes into it, etc. It's something you couldn't do in the previous release. So we've now added this functionality as well. So you'll see, we actually have over here, in fact, first thing I want to do is just tell it to create some extra civil 3D surfaces. So we'll just bring in a model some more geology surfaces. There we go. And what I'm going to do now is just go to this new command called Edit Profile, or Edit Profile View. And let's just select our profile view, and you can see it's really the same wizard we've just seen. So I could change the profile view to a different style. I could change the uh, bands to a different style if I wanted to. Okay, and more importantly here, I can now also include an, our new geology styles. I can also set it not to hatch as profiles as well. On the next page, I can tell it to change our borehole styles to move away from the uh, legend uh, geology code. Uh, let's use geology code instead, or whichever way I want to do it. And I'm not going to do it now, but I could edit and change which boreholes are being projected onto the profile view. And now we have our updated profile view. So that's the new edit geotechnical profile view command and it just really is so simple and easy to use to allow you to control what's shown in the profile view. Well, let me have a little drink. Again, if anybody has any questions at all, please don't hesitate to uh, put them in the question box and we'll do our best to answer any questions as we go through or at the end. A couple of quick things here now. We've now updated the hatch manager. Uh, we've uh, included materials in here. So if you're going to render or you're going to export out into InfoWorks or other systems, it will take materials with you. Uh, we've added a new hatch scaling factor, which we'll look at in a moment. And we've also added a whole bunch of uh, new hatch styles in, in the system as well. So if we have a very quick look at that, What we'll do now is I'm just measuring the width of my log strips. And if we go to this hatch manager, in the new version, if I just go down and quickly find that particular hatch style, so there we are, CDH, and we can see it's got a solid background, and we're overlaying it with my uh, soil classification hatch pattern. But what I'm going to do is by applying 5.5 to the scale factor, it scales up all of my hatch patterns across the whole of the drawing, so all my geotechnical hatch patterns, to match my new scale. And you can see now they fit perfect for my log strips. So a little bit of functionality we've added there. And as I said, we've also added all of these classification hatch patterns. So out of the box, it should be just about ready to go and show any type of uh, geotechnical information. The other thing we've added into this hatch manager is the material management now. So if I go down and just look for my sand hatch style, you can see I can now specify a AutoCAD render material to go with it as well. Now, just one thing to bear in mind here is that this render material must be available in your current template drawing. So even if you define it, and you open up a new drawing, if that temp material's not there, it can't use it, and it will just default uh, to a blank one. 
okay so you must have those materials but here you can see we're applying materials for different types of uh, geology and it means now if I quickly bring in some 3D surfaces there we go I'll create our material surfaces we'll put it into realistic mode it is now rendering that with those render materials we've just uh, allocated to the system okay and again if I flip it back now to shaded I've got mine shaded mode not to show uh, render materials so you can see that's just showing you now normal color okay we've a little a little minor thing but it's useful for when you're exporting the drawing you taking it into Navis works etc we've made use of property sets that were added in I think uh, AutoCAD uh, civil 2017 and 2018 so you will actually add property metadata onto the actual boreholes and onto the surfaces telling you sort of a little bit about the uh, bo the original borehole objects we now come on to really the, the the major piece of development for this released 2018 and we believe this is a bit of a game changer it's going to change the way in which people share geotechnical data with each other so we've created this term a fence diagram and what what do we consider as a fence diagram well i guess you can consider it as a through a profile view or cross section but in 3d so he's taking it from a 2d pictorial view into a 3d model of what the geology is under the screen under the ground now the reason why we've included this is when we've talked to a lot of geotechnical professionals they are very wary of sharing 3d surfaces representing geology materials with the wider construction team the reason is is that generally the way a geotechnical person will work is that they will draw a cross section draw a profile view and study that and actually work out and draw that the way they think it really should display as you move away from those cross sections what's really happening on a piece of surface a couple of hundred yards away from a borehole they don't really know that well so if you just share a complete 3d surface there could be areas where the model is further out less accuracy because it hasn't been looked at and studied so much detail so by cr sharing cross sections as we are here in this 3d which you can put into navis work put into infill works you're basically having a much better way of delivering this a safer way of delivering uh subsurface information but in a very understandable way now the great thing about this functionality is that it's really easy to use i'm just going to go straight in here and show you it working so for it to work we have a very simple command box we basically can either pick alignments or we can pick profile views we can specify a thickness our zero or a depth and that's it so let's show it actually working now here so I've got a drawing put it into 3d if we want so we can see it in 3d and what we're going to do here is go create I'm going to specify now select and I'm just going to pick two short uh, profile views we've got created we've got two simple alignments going across the site I'm going to specify a thickness if I left it at zero it will create lofted surfaces by specifying one it creates an AutoCAD civil 3d surface a uh, solid uh, should say 3d solid and you can see now we have these sort of uh, little vertical plates there if I'm going to quickly actually go over to strata and I'm just going to turn off my 3D strata surfaces so you can see what it's quickly created. Okay. So these ones aren't too stunning. So let's actually do it on the alignment down the road center line here. So let's go back to top view. So you can see we actually have a, a road center line alignment going through our site here. So I'm going to go and actually in this case, let's just create a new profile view for this alignment here. Zoom any matter 
what we pick here just see how that will do tell it to draw it doesn't matter what ball holes we have in it at the moment so now you can see we have our new profile view uh, up here so we're going to go back into the create command again and this time we're just going to select those two profile views as we did before but the two uh, road alignment ones this time and hit create and now if we go and look at this in 3d so we just quickly pan around look at it can you see it's generated this ribbon effect showing us what the geology is across uh, underneath the whole of our road at the moment we've got five times vertical duration on here so if I go to the location manager and tell it actually don't do it at five do it at real scale so we just pop that down to one you can see all my boreholes all my other data has gone down and this data has been left behind so just to update it I just tell it to rebuild it again so it's looking at those profile view lines again or the profile lines again and it's recreating them and update them. and now we actually have a much better looking now the important thing here is is sometimes doing full 3d modeling takes a little bit too much energy so how what you can do is if you go over to your pro and select a profile you can actually make the profile static now you should do this toward the end of the project when you are generating presentation drawings for it all because these won't update uh, automatically but with it being static I can now edit change the way the actual uh, profile lines all look so I can actually use my look at my experience study the actual model make sure it looks right the cross sections look right and once I've done all that I can just go back to my rebuild command again and tell it to rebuild my my fence diagrams and you can see it's taken those edits we've done in the cross section and actually put it into my fence diagram model so it's a really effective way of sharing geology information with the wider construction team very very effective so we've also to make it even easy because obviously in here there's 3d services fence diagrams other data if I want to take it through into uh, InfoWorks it'd be nice to have a little command that will just separate the uh, the sort of standard data so you could use it in other systems so to do that we've just created a very simple export command so if we were to look at that so going on from the same drawing we were looking at a moment ago the export command allows you to pick which type of uh, geotechnical objects you want to export you just give it a name and basically what it's going to do a clean AutoCAD drawing okay in it is just those types of objects selected in the export command before so you can see here it's just the fence diagrams the 3d boreholes the uh, the borehole mar uh, marker symbols on the top and that's it but it's crisp and clean if I click on part of the fence diagram you will see that we've got on it for instance this property data telling me for instance that is clay so it's a, just a simple way of cleaning up your drawing so you can use it in other systems of course if you've got it like that what we can do then is really make use of it in other systems so for instance here's a little workflow showing that data bringing into InfoWorks so which is a much much more effective way of, of sharing designs feasibilities for your client etc so here we are in uh, Charlotte North Carolina and uh, I'm going to go to data sources here and tell it to open up and bring in and here you notice I'm using 3d objects AutoCAD drawing 3d objects I'm just going to pick my export drawing we've just created a moment ago and we're going to send it up to the cloud uh, I've shortened this down slightly because it takes it a minute or so to process it but when we're ready to go all we have to do is come and configure it uh, tell it what coordinate system we're working in so I'm just going to give it a quick coordinate system here and the other thing we have to do is tell it what type of features we are working. now at the moment we don't actually have geotechnical features so I'm just saying here use city furniture instead it works fine by just using that information and we hit OK we re 
uh, refresh the drawing, the model, and you should see at the top end of my site here, my fence diagram and the boreholes. And we'll zoom in a lot closer to it, and you can see tracking underneath the road is all the geology we have going down the site. So you just think how effective that is at sharing and seeing people. If you're talking through with a client where you have perhaps very soft ground, areas of organic material, how much easier it is for people to see that and understand what's going on with the subsurface. One very last little change we've made uh, is we've all, you know, we all write help. We've updated the help system on here to make it a little bit more user friendly. It used to be just a bog standard PDF file. So this is actually on our Kinetics website now. So we go into the user guide area. You can see various information. The nice thing about this site is it's all interactive. So we can search any terms. So we want to know more about modeling geology. You can see we use this for all our products here. So if I want to know more about modeling geology, I just type in modeling geology here, or model geology. And uh, for many of you, it will be misspelt, because uh, uh, really we're only modeling. But uh, we go into here, and there's all he different videos, assistance. A lot of the videos on here will be related to uh, the geotechnical module. Many others will be actually secure, because they're related to our other products. But some of those still may be of interest to you as well on here. And uh, there's also a link, by the way, through to Kinetics to show you some uh, companion products, which we'll talk about in a moment. If you do want quick access to all that other geotechnical data, uh, information, training videos and stuff, that's on Kinetics Assist. Uh, it's only for a short term, but if you want to, you go to the address we've got down there, kinetics.com forward slash geomod, uh, just type in your details and we will give you access to everything that's on Kinetic Assist, so all the training videos for all their products. There may be some information in there that will be quite useful for you. So if you just want to go to that website, register details, uh, you may find some useful information there, especially if you are sort of a modeling geology, you're working with GINT, you want to look at how other things work, that may be a useful place for you to go at and uh, learn uh, how other approaches can be done. We're getting towards the end now of the webinar. Um, I think one more quick poll question and we'll then start sort of towards the summing up stage of it. So quick question now, really for those of you who are using and sharing geotechnical data, uh, what do you think about how it should be shared? Do you generally just work on your local machine? Do you think it will be useful for an active geotechnical drawing? Can be worked on on multiple machines? Do you think it's essential? Or, or other? Uh, if you can uh, vote, it would be much appreciated. We'll just give you a few more seconds. Okay, I think we're probably okay to close that now. So, 13% of you said you uh, work just on your local machine. 75% of you uh, said it would be very useful to uh, share. And 13% of you thought it was essential. Well, for some of you, I think the next section may be uh, appropriate for you. And that's when we really go on and look at going beyond what the geotechnical module uh, does. Now we have some really, some really simple questions to bear in mind. Uh, the first one is, if you have an active project uh, that you want to work on over multiple computers, not just on one machine, so the geotechnical module installs a local database on the machine where it's installed, and though you can share the actual drawing, no one else can edit the geotechnical data using the, any of the geotechnical functionality. Only the person who's created it on his local machine can do that. 
if you want to be able to work and update it for multiple machines, then that may be some reason why you want to go beyond the geotechnical module. Another one is, depends on how often your data changes. If your you get added new boreholes, or boreholes get changed, their geology definitions get changed, they get edited and modified, reinterpreted, or removed again, you can try to do it with a geotechnical module, but it's not really designed for it. What you really want is a data management system in the background and the data to be pulled in from the data management system and all the updates tweaked and updone automatically for you. So that may be another reason why you actually want to uh, go beyond the geotechnical module, manage, basically managing changes and updates. Another one is really dependent on the type of data you want to show on those borehole log strips that we project onto the profile view or show in plan. Out of the box, the geotechnical module will only ever show you the geology material. Yeah, is it the soil type or the rock type? It can't show you any other type of data. So you know, if you're interested in groundwater levels, contaminants, uh, SPT, blow counts, your know, end values, all that type of stuff, moisture content values, anything else that you may be really interested in, in, in looking at and putting onto your drawing, you can't do that with the uh, geotechnical module. It just works on material and nothing else. So again, that may be another reason why you need to go beyond what the geotechnical module does. And so another one in a similar vein is the same type of stuff, but you want a better way of viewing and visualizing it. You want to view it and visualize it in 3D. So you know where have we got high levels of water uh, content over perhaps an impermeable uh, uh, material like clay? Is it on a slope? Are you likely to have sort of a slippage there, uh, movement in the soil because of that. If you could actually see that data in 3D, visualize it in a model, then it gives you a lot more control, a lot more power. And again, that's something the geotechnical module in itself won't do. And really the final one down here is if you are working in an office where you're, you're having to work with GINT, this will actually allow you to move away from GINT, with reliance on GINT if you want to, and have much better integration with AutoCAD Civil and the Autodesk uh, product line. So that may be another reason why you want to go beyond the geotechnical module. Now, the way we do it, if you remember, we started off saying Kinetics, we're a developer and we specialize on geotechnical uh, data management and BIM. So for us, it all hinges around centralized data management. And we do it with a product called Holebase. Uh, it stores your data on your network and with that data stored, which may be past projects, current projects, we allow you then within the software, within Holebase itself, which is a standalone program, not necessarily related to AutoCAD, but your engineers can look at and plan where to drill new boreholes in new projects by looking at past projects, by looking at GIS maps. The whole lot can be pulled together into one source. From that, they can go on, log the data on site, capture the data, type it into this one central database, which actually can also, so it is used to generate borehole logs, but it can also be used to store all your geotechnical lab results in here. So it can all be stored back in here. And of course, if you've got one central database, you can use that now with the geotechnical modules, big brother called the Holbase SI extension for AutoCAD Civil 3D to pull that data into AutoCAD Civil, okay? You update the data in AutoCAD Civil, and it updates the data inside the, sorry, update the data in the whole base database, and it updates your model inside Civil 3D. So it gives you this uh, much more ability to edit it, update it, have it being worked on on different machines, etc. That same method, by the way, also allows the data to be accessed in tools like uh, access where very very quickly you can put out a whole bunch of grading envelopes uh spt depth uh, uh charts a whole host of things uh, when we have it in this sort of multi concentric circle model now because originally years ago this used to be quite a linear process but nowadays it's not one part of the project we quite often have people now who on site 
the type data in on a tablet, say P-Log, it gets sent to a whole base at the end of the evening, and it's seen inside AutoCAD 3D almost the same day or the next day. They're seeing it in context with what's being built there, and it means they can go back to the drilling team, to the engineers, and say, hey, we need to do a change here. We found material we didn't expect. It's underneath somewhere we got high loading. Can you drill some new holes here, here, and here, etc." So it becomes a much more dynamic, fast response by using this technique. So, yeah, just moving on very quickly, like what we've got here, all different outputs from whole base. So whole base itself has its own GIS system using Microsoft Bing mapping. You can bring your own map in, work out where you want to position boreholes, give it to your drilling team to go and put those boreholes. But it can also show you know, different uh, information on your maps as well. So that's one capability. You can use Holebase itself to generate your borehole logs, and this is incredibly rapid. You get your data in there, click the button, and a borehole log comes up. If you don't like that template, use a different style. Up pops that one very rapidly. And you can even use it to do simple cross-sections. Nowhere near as good as what you can do inside AutoCAD Civil, but you can still use it to do this type of stuff. We mentioned it links into Excel. Well, literally, these are just Excel charts designed in Excel but linked to data inside Holebase. You click a button, and it updates your Excel, and it's incredibly fast and easy to use. Now we're moving on, linking from that database through into what we call the Holebase SI extension for AutoCAD Civil 3D. It is very similar to the geotechnical module. It just has some extra capability. So as we go on to the second page here, you can see we're looking at different types of downhole data here. We're doing like a pictorial view of levels of contaminants across the site. So we're actually generating 3D surfaces from the geotechnical data, but not just the materials, but actually lab results or other information. So we could use this same technique, for instance, to actually look at and plot where we've got hard and soft ground across the site or we'll use it to try to map out where we got contaminants across the site, so the whole host of it. On the right-hand side, you can see log strips that show different downhole data, so groundwater, instrumentation, sample locations. Over here on the right, core recovery. This is all automatically drawn, so you saw how quick we drew the, the cross-section, the profile view, earlier on in the demo, but with this, it draws them like this just as fast. So you can set up a template how you want it to look, and it will just create that. So what we're basically saying here is if the geotechnical module doesn't go quite as far as you want, and you want to go beyond it, you know, based on these questions we said beforehand, then come and talk to Ken, to myself, to your representative at Applied, and we can hopefully talk to you about these and show you the extra capabilities we have beyond the geotechnical module. So I think at that, I'd like to thank everybody for their patience and their time in sticking with it. I hope you got a lot out of this uh, webinar. You found it useful. Uh, a lot of you said you were using and drawing geotechnical drawings, but did not use the geotechnical module. So even if you're not upgraded to 2018 yet, I suggest you get onto the your uh, Autodesk management site and don't go and download the, the geotechnical module for 17 or 16 ASAP and start using it. Uh, I'm just going to hand over now back to Ken to see whether there's any questions or and let Ken finish off. But in the meantime, uh, thank you so much for your time. I do hope you uh, found the webinar 